What is going on guys? Welcome back to the algorithms and data structures tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about the heap data structure, which is a tree like data structure that allows us to implement the so called priority queue that we talked about in the last video in an efficient way in a logarithmic runtime or with a logarithmic runtime complexity. So let us get right into it. So let's talk about the heap data structure. Now what you can see here on the left is a binary tree. And a binary tree is essentially just a graph without cycles where each node has two children. So we have one node A here, it has a left child and it has a right child. That's essentially what it means to, have, to be a binary tree. Now, of course, sometimes you're only going to have a left child because you don't have an additional uh, element that you want to add to the list. So you have only a left child and then you have basically null, which is, you know, you could say null is the right child. Whatever, this is a binary tree, but this binary tree is special because it fulfills the so-called heap property. And the heap property uh, depends on what kind of heap we're looking at. In this case, we're looking at a max heap, and this means that uh, every child has to be smaller than its parent. So each parent node has to be uh, larger than all of its childs. So 17 is larger than 2 and 7, uh, 19 is larger than 17 and 3, 100 is larger than 19 and 36, 36 is larger than 25 and 1. So in this case, the heap property of a max heap is fulfilled. This is essentially uh, what, what you always want to maintain in a heap. You also have the min heap, for example, uh, where it's the other way around. So the heap property here is that the parent is always smaller than its children. Uh, so you could have something like five and then you have uh, 16 and uh, 28. Well, that's not an eight, 28. And then here you have something even larger. So 50 and 60, for example, whatever. Uh, but notice that unlike a data structure that we're going to learn in the future or learn about in the future, the binary search tree, it doesn't matter if the left node is larger than the right node or the left node is, um, you know, there's no specific order. The only thing that we want is that the parent is always larger than its children. This is um, in a max heap at least or the other way around in a min heap. We don't care about uh, the left child being larger or smaller than the right child. The only thing we want is that this is the largest element then these are the two largest elements after that and so on. So this is the basic heap property in a max heap and in the min heap, it's the other way around. Now let us go back to the idea of a priority queue. What we wanted out of a priority queue is that elements get processed based on their priority. So we had a bunch of elements and they had a priority of one, two, three, four, five, ten, a thousand, whatever. And we can say the lowest number means the highest priority or the largest number means it's the highest priority. Um, and then what we wanted to do is we want to enqueue elements, they get sorted into the list in logarithmic time, this was our goal. And we also wanted to dequeue the element with the highest priority first. Now we talked about how we could do that with a linked list, but the sorting and the accessing would only be done in linear time or possible in linear or pseudo linear time. So what we need to do is or what we wanted to do is we wanted to find a logarithmic way. Now, Let's go to our heap here and look at it. Now, what we have here at the root in a max heap is always the largest element and the root node can be accessed in constant time since it's always the same address. If you think about this tree as uh, having all these childs, all these um, positions in fixed memory addresses, you can say that the root node is always the largest element. If the, heap, uh, if, the, if the heap property is satisfied, the root node will always be the largest element. And if we say that the largest element is the largest priority, the highest priority, we can say that the element that has to be dequeued next is always at the root node. Uh, so in this case, we could always just you know, pop this out basically, uh, and we could process the root node. Now this would be deleting an element and we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, how this would work and why this is possible in logarithmic time. But let's talk about inserting first because in this case it's very easy to see that the root element is always going to be the largest one but this part down here doesn't look really sorted. We have 19, 36, 3, 1, 2 all over the place. So let's think about how we can insert elements into this heap data structure um, in logarithmic time without violating the heap property. Now, what we would do for that is we would just go ahead and, and, uh, and append the new element at the end of uh, this heap data structure. And at the end means that we fill this tree data structure up from left to right. We don't just add it somewhere here, but the next element, whatever it is, will be the left child of this, the next free place. If you look at it like that, this is the first position. Then we have two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. Uh, these are the positions. So this would be the next one that's free. So whatever element we add here, let's say we add the number uh, 92 here, whenever we add a new element, we just append it onto the next uh, onto the uh, the next free uh, position here. So what we do is we say, okay, this is tw uh, 92 here. And the problem is now the heap property is violated. So what we do in order to restore it in order to satisfy it again, is we perform a so called heapify up operation heapify up, which essentially means that we just go to this element here and compare it to its parent. So we say, okay, three is less than 92. That violates the heap property. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to change it by swapping these two nodes. Now let me delete them real quick. So we're swapping 92 and three. So we have 92 here. And three is the left child of 92. And what we have now is we have uh, the next check, because now what we have to do is we have to compare it to its parent again, we can see 19 is less than 92. So what we do is we perform another swap here. And we swap 92 with 19. 92 and 19. So we have 92 here. And 19 here. By the way, we don't need to check for that 17. Because since 92 was al uh, already larger than 19, and 19 was the parent of 17, and thus larger than 17, we don't need to compare 92 to 17, it's going to be automatically larger than 17. Now what we have to do is we have to compare it to 100, but 100 is larger than 92. So it's done and we have the heap uh, properties satisfied again. Now, this is possible, obviously, in logarithmic time, because again, we have this the same thing that we have with merge sort and all that, we have the amount of levels. So we have one, two, three, four levels, and the amount of levels is the logarithm of base two of the amount of elements. So the amount of levels, uh, levels is logarithmic based on the amount of elements. And uh, because we don't need to compare more than the amount or more times than the amount of levels, we have to uh, to do the comparisons a maximum amount of time as there are levels. Well, this was not an English sentence. What, what, what we need to do is we need to start at the bottom. And in the worst case, we need to compare it to all the elements through all these levels to all its parents, essentially, until we get to the root node. So the worst case is we go through all the levels, but the amount of levels is logarithmic, the comparison itself is constant, thus the process of inserting uh, or inserting is uh, logarithmic as well. So heapify up and inserting are a logarithmic operation. So now we know how to enqueue elements in logarithmic time, we know how to put new elements into this heap data structure into this priority queue. But we also need to find a way to pop out the elements to process the elements because we already set 100 here or the root node is always going to be the next element to be processed. The highest value will be at the root node. In a min heap, it's going to be the lowest value depending on what kind of priority you're interested in. Uh, and we want to process it. But then after processing it, you know, you need to remove it from the heap data structure. And if we just remove 100, uh, you have an empty root node and no longer any tree, you don't have a tree anymore. Um, and if you just shift around some things, you maybe uh, violate the heap property. So we need to find a way to pop out an element and restructure the tree so that it uh, fulfills the heap property again in logarithmic time, because then we have a method to insert an element into a data structure based on its priority in logarithmic time. And we can also pop out the largest element. So the most important element and restructure the tree again, so that it works the next time in logarithmic time as well. So everything that we want to do in the priority queue and queuing dequeuing can be done in logarithmic time once we figure out how to do that. So what we do here is we essentially just delete the root node and process it. So we pop it out, we say, okay, 100 is the element and then in your programming code, you do whatever you want with it, you say, I don't know, uh, do some calculations with it, but then we remove it from the tree. And what we do instead, or what we do after that is we take the last element here it doesn't have to be the smallest, but it's going to be the last element in the tree, we said we fill it up from left to right. So the, uh, the most right element of the last level of the last row, we take it and replace uh, the root node by this value. So I'm going to redraw the tree here without the circles. Uh, so we have 3, 92, 36, 17, 19, 25, 1, 2, and 7. This is the now now, now the new tree The 100 is out of the tree. 
And what we need to do now is you can obviously see that the heap property is violated because there is a three, a very small, one of the smallest elements is at the root, uh, at the root node. So what we want to do now is we want to uh, perform a so called heapify down. So this is the, the opposite of the heapify up operation, the heapify down operation. And what we do here is we just take this element here, this root element, and we compare it to the largest of its children. So in this case, 92, because 92 is larger than 36. Uh, and we compare it to 92. And if 92 is larger than three, we're going to swap positions. So in this case, it is. And because of that, we're going to swap the positions of 92 and three. And we will get one level down. So 92 and three. And now you can see why we pick the larger element because if I was to swap it with 36, which would also be fine, because 36 is larger than three, uh, we would have 36 as a root node here, which is above 92, even though it's uh, smaller than 92. So you always want to swap it with a larger element, or compare it with a larger element to the larger element. Now, in this case, again, we have the three here, and we compare it to 19, because 19 is larger than 17, we can see three is less than 19. So what we do again is we swap their positions. And we say 19 and three change places. So we have 19 up here, and three down here. And as you can see, in logarithmic time, same logic as with inserting or heapify up in logarithmic time, we have restored the heap property, we were uh, again, satisfying the heap property here. Um, and this can be done in logarithmic time again, because we have a logarithmic amount of levels, we have um, log to a maximum of log to um, log base two of the amount of elements levels, this is the amount of levels that we can have as a maximum. And because of that, the amount of operations that we need to do is logarithmic. And thus the heapify down and the whole deleting or popping operation, the whole dequeuing operation can be done in logarithmic time. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. This was a video about the priority queue implementation logarithmic time. We talked about the priority queue in the last video, why we want to do it or what, what the goal is. In this video, we talked about an efficient implementation using the heap data structure tree like or not a tree like a tree data structure, essentially a binary tree data structure that uh, enables us to enqueue and dequeue data in logarithmic time. So if you like this video, or if you have any questions, let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Also subscribe to this channel if you want to see more future videos for free. And other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.